that was that was intense. You know that what? was kind of like WWE. I was thinking that too. Wrestling. I could sense it from you. I'm feeling feisty. She's feisty. You know why? Why? Because episode three. Three. <gasps> three! Oh my, gosh, my favorite! My Sarah's favorite number three times! Favorite Wait, number. Wait, my favorite number is three. And right. it's three, three times? I mean... It's like Fibonacci sequence. We better make this a good episode. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. Sarah is trashed. <laughs> I've had, like, she a had glass sips. of wine. Uh, yeah, well, we're recording later than usual, so yeah. we thought we'd indulge. Yes, usually we're, like, AM recording, so, yeah. you know, we don't. Yeah, we do, like, a cup of tea. Yeah, Boo. some coffee, water. Not today. <laughs> no hydration around here. That's right. How are you, Sarah? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm like recovering. I feel like I finally washed all the dirt off of me from my camping trip. Oh my God. Yeah, which I saw some beautiful things. Let me tell you, Zion. Your photos were gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I read a bunch of great books. Wow. Oh, man. I was like, did you feel thirsty connected for to food, nature? For food, for uh, books. Yeah. I felt so connected to nature. Was it peaceful? Yes. And the stars were so bright and there was something crazy going on with like where the planets were in the solar system. So I could see like three planets with the naked eye when we were in Zion. Wow. Yeah. In like the beginning of June, Jupiter was visible. That's cool. How did you know that though? Because you it was an, a yellowy color and flickering. Oh my God. You just know it to, when you see it, you're like, oh, there's I did. Jupiter? Well, I, I looked and I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure that that's a different that's not a regular star. Like that doesn't look like, like that looks different. Something, you know, and then I looked it up the next day and sure enough, it was like, this is what you'll, it'll look like in the sky and this is where it'll be. I'm like, that's exactly where it was. That's so cool. Yeah. And I think it was like Mars and Venus or something that were right on the horizon, but I, we were too, it was too mountainous for us to see those. Mm. But yeah. What's your schedule when you're camping? Do you go to bed early because it gets dark early or what? Sometimes. It depends. I mean, I was reading some good books. So there was one night I stayed up to like two o'clock in the morning reading. Just reading? Like reading. Like, I, I mean, I read the whole book and I couldn't put it down. And how was your Airstream? Oh, lovely. Was it? I'm, I'm buying one of those. You love them? For sure. I'm getting a small one that I can just throw on the back of that Jeep and then just take it to the beach to just hang out. The dogs loved it. Mm-hmm. They're cute. They're easy to clean out. They're, it's like, and I love that. I mean, anytime you go camping or you're in a small area, you're forced to be organized and forced to be clean because it would, you can't, yeah, it gets, not, gross it gets real, real fast, fast mm-hmm. you know? So I love that because it makes for, Oh, I know, Sarah. I was on a show. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called. Oh Roadrunner. my god! <laughs> oh, oh yes, I forgot, and I'm familiar. <laughs> I think whenever I think about oh that god, show, I forget. <laughs> I just have you on the challenge with me. We should have. I should have been on the Real World, and you should have been on for Road sure. Rules. Yeah, I mean, maybe that was what they were getting at. Yeah, like, like fish out of yes, water. Yes, yes, <laughs> I would have been too comfortable. I would have been like, nah, I'm good, TJ. I'll just stay here in this RV for the rest <laughs> of my life. Yeah, because you're right, though. It takes very little for, you know how it is with your car, too. Like you get two pieces of trash yes. in there and it looks like you're a total bum. Yeah. It's like that on an RV, too. And um, how did you do that with so many people? Yeah, and the crew. Oh, forget it's it. It's gross. Even and you just see them, them eating like, stuff and they put the wrapper down. I know they do that. And they put your their feet on your bed. Like, cause they oh, don't, hell, I mean, no. I, I know it's like they have nowhere right. to put their feet and stuff, but it's gross. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. It was hard to keep the dogs off the bed. They must've really liked that. Oh, they loved it. Did they you go on hikes tell. and stuff with you? A, f- a couple. In national parks, they're, you're not allowed to take dogs on any trails that aren't paved. Really? There are a whole bunch of rules. That seems... Um, and there aren't a lot of trails that are dog friendly. Tell me what the reason is that they can't go on dirt trails. <sighs> it seems I, like that would I think be it has more to do with the safety mm-hmm. of the trails at certain parts where you, know, you have people going up and people going down. And some of the parts of the trail are really narrow. And if you had a dog and somebody was trying to come down, maybe wow. it's... Not, I don't know. It's not about a safe. That. It's like a safety thing. Mm-hmm. And the trails that they are allowed on are are like never really more than a mile, two miles or something. And they're mm. more flat. And you know, did you ever see circle. anyone breaking the rules? No. Oh wow. Hmm. Do you see any forest rangers? Of course, my own husband broke the rules of of what like, and I <laughs> and we got into a whole That's thing funny. about that <laughs> because I was like, I read every you know 
every new park, you like read the trail guide and they have I'm a sure list you of like, did. you know, I love rules. They have a list of trail <laughs> etiquette and oh like God. hiking etiquette. And it's like, oh, if you're walking in a pair and like you make sure you stay, like it's like on a road, you stay single on file the road. Or, oh, you go yeah. to the right. And if you're in a group, mm-hmm. you go single file. And he kept on walking in the middle of the road. He's a rebel. And then it, right? And then he was pushing, like I would be forced to walk to one side of him. And I was always the one who had to move out of the way for the other hikers who were coming on the other trail or on the oh, other that's direction. The worst. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. Like, pick what you want to hike in front of me or behind me because I can't walk side to side. The trail's not big enough. And- do you prefer to be the leader? Uh, or do you no, like to I follow? Think I, well, it depends on who I'm with. Like, I, I thought I wanted Landon to set the pace for, okay. you know, because mm-hmm. I never, I, I mean, I can just. Oh, I know. Go. Oh, I know. And then it's like annoying for the people who are, yeah. So, like, <laughs> yeah, it's best to let other people, yeah, choose set a pace, pace and then like stop whenever. And, you know, I was surprised. I hadn't been like really, you know, working out cardio wise. I've just been like doing yoga here and there, but I haven't done a lot of cardio in a long time. And in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to just get annihilated. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to make it. First day, I was like, oh, I got this. That's so nice. No problem. 11 miles. Done. Right. Because you en- you enjoy the experience. It. Yeah. And you just go, at, I tell mm-hmm. in, I go at mm-hmm. one speed and that's first gear, <laughs> maybe second, but it's first gear nonstop the whole way. And yeah. I'm super into park rangers and like forest rangers. Me too. Like, that's super sexy. It is. I had a, I kind of had a little girl crush on uh, the woman who... St- she was a park ranger mm-hmm. who also works in some science field as well, where she was conducting research on recycling habits of everybody who was at the park <laughs> and like at the, the campsite. And so when you went up and we were right next to the, the trash cans and one of uh, the spaces we stayed in. And so I would see all the people come in. And then when I went to go like dump my trash and recycling off, she's like, excuse me, can I interview for you for a survey? And like, condu- I'm conducting some research. And I was like, oh, you had me a survey. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like so cute, and I it was so nice. And I'm like, oh. and she's like just sitting with her little canteen and like well, taking the science notes. You know that notes. they're nice, so nice. They you respect nature. They respect nature. They appreciate the simple things. Yes, they're knowledgeable and want you to ask questions about. You know, I was like, well, tell me what. Can I, they're not superficial, can, not at all. Yeah, I'm into oh, all of those yeah, traits. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if you're a park ranger. Like if I ever get divorced, sorry, Adam, <laughs> you know, maybe that's my next thing. A park ranger. Who knows? When you were out though, was there a lot of bugs? That's what gets me is the mosquitoes well, and stuff. Well, I'm like a mosquito magnet. Are you? So, oh my gosh. It's like a joke. Wonder why. Landon doesn't put bug spray on because he's like, oh, Sarah's here. What I'm is like that one about? of those mosquito attractors. I think maybe I run a little hot and it's more <laughs> CO2 or something that you. I love that you have a theory. I don't know. I mean, I can't figure it out. Or I have that blood, t- some blood type, or, you know, they, I've tried everything. Oh, eat bananas and more potassium. That's what and they, they say. They say that, but that doesn't help. Nothing helps. Oh, my God. I mean, nothing helps. Well, I missed you. Oh, I missed you. I really did. It was too long. I was. I kept saying oh, to Adam, "Who goes on a two and a half week vacation?" It's so true. Who you does? Know, but like lots of people. But <laughs> and I, I didn't have. T- I didn't have. I I put my phone away. Oh yeah. I was. Yeah, no you cell. were committed to. Yes. Going off the grid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong and with that. And so I was like, I can't even check in with my Sus. I know. Well, I'm glad you're back. Thanks. I'm happy to be back. And it really did look beautiful. The pictures, oh my God, oh, stunning. It really was. And they don't even begin to capture. I know. That's how the thing that's annoying. It's not even close. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, you know, I was just like, I can't, it, what's, why even bother? Because this can't even translate to how beautiful it is. Yeah. It doesn't create the full effect. Yeah. Like a waterfall in Yosemite, the amount of power mm-hmm. and force and just, I mean, you just, it, it makes me feel like humbled and just yeah, small, majestic. but in a good way, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that like, we don't, we're just surrender to, cause look at how powerful just this water going out. Like this carves canyons. Yeah. It's hard to believe it's all right here. It's not even that far away. And America is freaking beautiful. Yeah. I had never been to Utah. I had never been, well, I've been to Park City in the winter, but it's like different. I've been, but never really seen it. It was like driving through 
oh, what's it called? Rusty Springs from from the Cars movie, the Pixar Cars movie, yeah. or whatever that that I think it's something like that. Yeah. Rusty Springs. Sorry. Yeah. It was so stinking cute. Mm. Every turn we went around, I was like, oh my god, that looks like the movie. Oh my god, that looks like Disneyland, but it's like real. Oh my and god, I was freaking out. It was so fun. Would you say you were a little bit annoying at probably those times? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, and we were listening to Joe Rogan's podcast oh with god. he had when he had Neil deGrasse Tyson on. Oh, okay, that's allowed. Uh, totally allowed. Except I had to pause it every ten minutes to be like, T- tell me about this. Do you know about this? <laughs> like I was, I was definitely annoying. Yeah. But you know, what ifs? Yeah, man, you were on vacation. You can I'm, be annoying. Right. Did you, when I'm you were school, gone, I got to learn about something. Did you pack your lube? Oh my God. It's so funny to say that because <laughs> absolutely I you did. You did. <gasps> Duh. I'm so happy. I thought you were going to be like, no. No, I, pa- I packed so many of the, yep, yep. You name it. I got I'm it. I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. She brought her Omax O-Shot yes. lube. And if you're not familiar, we keep talking about it. It's the CBD. So funny you say that. I totally did. Ar- arousal oil. It has eight natural botanicals. It gives you that sensory tingling without that hot and cold weirdness that I'm not into. And I assume a lot of people are not. Right. And it increases stimulation and circulation and, of course, lubrication and gets things all worked up for you know all your business. You just apply it and let the party begin. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, uh, here's what I love about it. They really wanted to make a product that tasted good. Yep. Which, uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And smelled good because yeah. sometimes oh. it's oddness. It does have a we- like a weird plasticky, like chemical, like chemical rubbery smell. Yes. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's lovely. They I have- like, I would confuse it almost for like a hair care product. Like, you yeah. know, it's like a, like a nice fancy Fruity. serum. Yes. Yes. And that was their goal is like, we want to make this so that people want, can taste it or and just be around it and it smells good and you tastes good. You better be tasting it. Right. Taste it. Taste it, <laughs> park ranger. Uh, whether you're single or looking to spice up your relationship with more satisfying sex, every woman can benefit from a more enjoyable orgasmic experience. Omax Oshot comes to the rescue and provides heightened sexual sensations that give you an instant and long-lasting satisfaction you've been looking for. And it's 100% safe and natural. That's critical. Remember, go to Omax Health dot com today and enter code brain candy to take advantage of the incredible savings that's o-m-a-x health.com and enter code brain candy to get 20 percent off oshot and all the omax products worldwide that i bought um they have a cbd um i guess it would be called like an edible or oh, a, yeah, i guess yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. more like a, a gel cap or something yeah. to yeah. help you go to sleep oh, that's great. and i'm excited to try that oh, they have a lot really of different relaxing. products yeah so give that a whirl. Nice. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm excited mm-hmm. to hear. You say you w- had a lot of stories and experiences on yes. your adventure. So I'm all ears. I mean, it was it was fun to connect to nature. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, like, I, mm, how do I, like, put this in, like, the nicest way towards myself? Uh, I'm a crazy, <laughs> raging, anxiety-filled Mm. Control freak? Control freak when the trailer is being driven. And I, it was all I could do to not around every turn go, oh my God, ah, you're too close. Ah, you're going to hit the branches. And Why? after a little while, I don't know. I mean, I, like we laugh in my family that it's genetic, that every single <laughs> one of us has whatever the gene is to make you like take a deep breath and gasp and grab the dashboard because <laughs> it like go, my grandma had it. My aunt is like that. My mom was like that. And I'm like that. I can't escape it. It's got to be a control thing. And uh, <laughs> at a certain point, Lynn was like, okay, well, how about you drive? And we switch off. And at first that? I was terrified. I was like, I don't know if I can drive that thing. And I was like, what skills does a woman possess, a man possess that a woman doesn't possess as far as driving? Like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. So just drive it. And it was no problem. Were you afraid that your gender would prevent you from driving? No, it properly? was all, like, mm, it wasn't even that. It was like. You had insecurity. Yeah, and it felt almost overwhelming. Like, you're only, you know this is how big you are and this is how big this thing is you know i don't know why it was like that i can't even explain it mm-hmm. but it took me a sec to be like wait a sec you drive yeah. the suv you've you've like yeah you know, you're fine you're fine and 
like I was the there's I, I don't know I I real quick we learned that I'm good at backing up the trailer, mm-hmm. which is like a mind. Sorry, Linda. Fuck. <laughs> It really is because it's like you have to do it in the opposite direction that you think you have to go and a little bit is a lot and and but when we got the trailer the tow hitch like the the you know when we bought the car and we set it up to have the tow package <laughs> there's something electrically that they didn't shut off so I have an uh like my braking system if it senses that anything's in behind me it automatically stops and locks the brakes. And that little button that you press to turn that off would not work. So what happens is I would have to, as I'm backing up, simultaneously be timing, pushing the button. You have about three seconds before it turns back on and locks up. Oh, my God. And so you'd go like three feet and then it would lock and three feet. And then then people would come over and they'd be like, oh, do you need me to help? And Lana would have to be like, no, it's an electrical error. And one guy came over and was like, do you need me to help? And I really did love Landon at this moment for this. This guy comes over and he's like, oh, do you need me to help backing up? And Lana goes, no, it's an electrical glitch. And trust me, she knows way more about how to do this than you would. And I was like, yeah, "Yeah, I do. And I crush that parking spot every single time. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. No, that's not an easy thing. I was very proud of myself for doing that. Good. And I was like, "Mm, I can handle this. Like, mm." I was like doing the big turn with the wheel. This is another thing. Maybe I'm super horny today, but (laughs) I am really attracted to men who can park. Oh, I know what you mean. (sighs) Yep. That was a deal sealer for me when I saw Adam parallel park. What's with that? Oh, like he's one of those people where you think there's no way we can fit in there. And he's like, he always goes, you're about to see something real special. And he's right. It's so funny because like, I, I think as a female, I've used that line. And that was always (laughs) something that my friend Allie, shout out to Allie, we would go driving everywhere together. And sometimes she would park in my neighborhood in Long Beach and she'd call me to her car and be like, can you parallel and park my car? And I'd be like, are you kidding me? Watch me me? handle this. You should have taught her. You got to teach a she man know, to oh, fish. She, did, she does know how. She like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She definitely we don't want women it, wandering no, around. No, no, no. It wasn't like that. Like she definitely. Because uh, I'm a good parallel parker. Yeah. And so it would really gross me out if Adam weren't one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm, that's just my thing. Yeah. But He's you know. He's a good one. Yes, yes. And I really I get like that. that. I get that. Thank Ooh, God. Yeah. But you know what I'm not into? The parking in the wrong direction. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That you might as yeah. That's I. Is that a dude thing? It's a type A personality thing. Okay. This is really interesting. So here's a study for you. We I read about this (laughs) in my undergrad work in psychology. So you're talking about like backing into a parking space. Yes. When they face the wrong, like the they they back in. You'd think it's something like that. Sometimes maybe it is. Like you know, you take the car into consideration. You know. Like who is driving, all that. But <laughs> so they took these researchers were interested in like type A personalities versus and like what those characteristics of that gotcha. like high anxiety, high whatever it is, mm-hmm. or um, maybe neuroticism, if you will, mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so they looked at a, a doctor's office that dealt with people who had heart conditions, and I think it was like yeah, it was some sort of like heart doctor were. Like, Cardiologist, cardiologist office. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. And they looked at the Sarah. people who had AM appointments, like before the workday started. So like I'm the into 6 a.m. to I'm 8 a.m. into it. Okay. And took a picture of the parking lot at that time. I love this. And so then much. compared it to the picture of the people who were in the afternoon that didn't have like that job, maybe they had to get to right away, whatever. Almost every car in the parking lot from at the 6 a.m. to like 8, then that first block where everybody's like, I got to go to work, I got to get the, you know, all parking backwards. Because they want to like zoom uh-huh. out. It's like a, I got to have an escape plan. I got to be ready to go. Okay. I got to be in control of, of this. And when you see the two pictures, it's undeniable. That's that odd. It's so weird. Okay. It's like the, there was another guy who discovered he was a chair manufacturer. Like he made, <laughs> repaired chairs. And he noticed that the chairs in the cardiologist's office would be worn down faster than other offices that he looked at. And like, is there a way that people who are more anxious sit in chairs? Stop. And people who are more anxious will sit 
at the edge of the chair. They don't sit fully back in the chair. He was looking at like wear patterns and how it would get worn down on the this edge. This is insane. And this was like in the 70s or 80s or something. And it was a chair guy like a, that who kind of like unlocked the secret oh my onto God. your that kind of mind body connection and what our body and our behaviors. So sometimes if I find that I'm sitting at the edge of my seat and I totally do that, you start preparing for your heart I, attack. Yes. <laughs> or try to go, okay, sit back in your chair, relax. You know, it changes things. Breathe a bit. Yeah. Breathe. Oh my God. None of this was in the notes of things I wanted to bring up, but they're all <laughs> totally like a classic brain candy. Classic. We yeah. have a I'm plan. Like, I have no actual study, like, it. you know, that that's from, or I can't cite anybody's name for that, but I'm sure it exists out there. Chair study. Another thing that people probably, uh, would want to wear because I don't know. I don't have a fucking <laughs> transition. But another thing you you should wear because it's fantastic is Rothy's shoes. Whether you're type A or B person. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. God, I hate when I don't have a transition. So on your My part. friend Leah goes, hey, she texted me and was like, I love your um, transitions. Do you plan them ahead of time? <laughs> Clearly, I do not. Not because today. That really was a bummer. Oh, but that's funny. Rothy's are fantastic. In fact, at our um, Brain Candy Meetup mm-hmm. last week, there was a Brainiac here yes. who wore beautiful blue. I yep, love the color I loved of them those. Too. They're like really rich royal blue. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and she had the point. They have a variety of styles. I wear the sneaker. You've seen them on my Instagram. They're white. Um, and the reason why I got white is because you can throw them in the wash, and they come out good as new. And to me, that that's what I was saying to the Brainiac. I was like, you know, they are so worth buying yes. because they will never wear out or look gross never. or stink. I, what, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And that Gosh. to me is a big deal. But they have a wide range of colors and patterns. They're always getting new ones. And then uh, they have the four different styles, the point, the loafer, the sneaker. Um, and they're just... They're made out of recycled water bottles, so they're great for the earth. They're sustainable and all that jazz. It'll blow your mind. So go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S.com slash brain candy and get your new favorite flats, comfort, style, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash brain candy today. Check out all the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash brain candy. Uh, yeah, bad transition. I'll work on that. No, it was great. Next time. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> um, okay, I have one for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, she's stretching people. That is a good one. <laughs> I'm it's a real good study when you got to stretch first. Before have you, you heard of this? In Canada, yeah. they have a, a cocktail that is... I'm in. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> you will change your mind. Uh, this is beyond, beyond. What? It's called the Sour Toe Cocktail. Sour Toad? No. No. Toe. Sour Toe. Mm Mm-mm. Okay. (laughs) They, okay, you get the drink Mm -hmm. and in it. No. What? (laughs) Sarah, no. Is a toe. No. No. A human. Whose? Human toe. Stop. This is not a thing. And when you drink it, you must let, make sure that it touches no, <laughs> no. your lips. No. It's just a bunch of and, bunk. And when some people, for instance, let's say you're hiking and you get a, what do you call that, a hypothermia? Yeah. Where they got to chop yes. off your toe. You can donate it to this wherever to put in the cocktail. Why is this a thing? Right. There sounds like something from ancient Egypt. <laughs> Ancient Egypt. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we, I don't know why. It's like, we're, yeah. Would you, okay. Sarah is somebody who is always competitive. Yes, that is true. So if somebody challenged you, like, I'll give you this much money mm. or something, would you do it? And it's a real toe. Let's say it's from a, a trucker who <sighs> got abandoned in a snowy no, ditch. God. You're it <laughs> I worse. wanted it to be like a big man. Yeah. Uh, Would you, and let's say the cocktail is really yummy and everyone says it tastes great. It's just gross like, because there's a rotting toe is, inside it. So, but here's my question. Is there any risk of me, I don't know, ingesting any? It must be pickled. It must be. <laughs> I love like, when we try I, to right, be serious. It must be. Like, you know how they keep... Yeah. Um, 
Nostradamus' wiener in a jar? Well, I didn't, but now I do. <laughs> he His had wiener, a gigantic... Huh? Google oh, it. Oh, I gotta Google that right this second. Google it, you guys. Okay. Nostradamus', Nostradamus is- dick. Dick, Linda, is <laughs> in a jar of, I guess, what is that, formaldehyde or something? Yeah. But see, that then it's like, I'm not going to ingest formaldehyde. No, right. But maybe they rinse it off and, I don't know, can you sanitize something that's been in- Wait, is it not Nostradamus? Rasputin? Thank you! Yes. Because oh I was like, that came up Fuck. real quick. Fucking so, hell, I'm so but mad. But no, it, uh, the fact that... <laughs> it, it, no. Whoa! Holy crap! hey oh hi oh I'm so mad that I said... I ruined it. I ruined a legendary it. lover and mystic, Rasputin. God damn it. But like 12 inches... Rasputin. Regs. Right, he's a show or not a girl. What I don't if he's know. What still if he's a grower? grower? That's what I'm saying. Is that? Do you think they could have done it erect what? somehow? No, there's no way. I you know, can't. right? What do you say? Is it 12 inches? Or yes, real? that's what it says. He has a gigantic penis. Do you wow. think that the formaldehyde makes it grow? No, though? it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Well, at any rate, Nostr- not Nostradamus. It's Rasputin's dick. Is in a jar. It's in a museum somewhere. Yeah, they also said that Napoleon's is also kept, and it is called a small pod. Shut up. So he his. He See that? Had, my God, he had. <gasps> he had little dick energy. He had Napoleon. Oh my God! He <gasps> essentially had a Napoleon complex. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. You are kidding? Yeah, me. that's real. That makes sense for him. Why would he donate his dick? I don't think he was like. Who did this to him? Okay, Napoleon Bonaparte, French dictator and conqueror. Dictator. <laughs> right, Bonaparte. Come on, we can keep going with this. The penis. Since his death in 1821, Napoleon's penis has been the subject of an urban legend that claims during his autopsy in St. Helena, it was somehow accidentally removed and traveled the globe in the hands of collectors ever since. The real story. Accidentally removed? That isn't a thing. Right. That's not a good point. It says the story, Napoleon's penis is presently in Inglewood, New Jersey, maybe. A 2015 article in the Washington Post cataloged the path of Bonaparte's penis from Napoleon himself to an Italian priest, to a London bookseller, to a book dealer in Philadelphia, to a French museum in New York. From there, after being displayed for decades, it was bought at an auction in Paris in 1977 by an American urologist whose descendants currently live in New Jersey. Penis myth accuracy. While it's been confirmed that this mummified item is actually a penis whether or not it's napoleon's is sadly impossible to verify what wow and it's miniature yeah it's wow lyndon b johnson <laughs> what are it you says looking that at right it was now? referred to as jumbo this is a it's it, i'm looking at an article on history's most notorious penises Oh my God! Why have I not read Which this? Which isn't the worst story, considering the other one I was going to bring to you was the woman who had a stroke because she took a poo that was too big. <laughs> so I don't know which is better. She lost That's, ten years of memories. I've never been happy. <laughs> I can honestly say I've peaked. <laughs> this is it, folks. Like, well, episode three thirty three. We knew it. Knew it. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Do you think oh, that man. that's Napoleon's penis? I. I mean. Why not? Why wouldn't it? Why would not? Okay. And. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he would be somebody who would have a pot Yeah, there, size. there's no way he had a big one. But I thought maybe. But um, here's what I need to know from Napoleon's <laughs> wife. Did he put in work? Yeah, that's all who cares? I, I do not care. Me neither. If your mouth works. Yep. Just make up for it. And I mean, there are many ways around the mountain. But it is funny though. Yeah. Because. Right. He is the prototype. He is the quintessential. What yes. did you just see? Sarah just made a face. I did because it says Adolf Hitler. According to various rumors, Hitler had a micro penis, a missing testicle, and an undescended testicle, and a condition where the pee hole is situated further down the shaft. Come on. What? There's no way that's true. Who is saying wow. this? It says it's tough to say if Hitler actually had some kind of genital abnormality. Or if we just want him to have some kind of abnormality. But since yeah, this is right. Hitler we're talking about, whether or not he may have had or a malformed penis is really the least of the questionings we should be asking. That's what the article says. Well, you know what, though? it 
It makes it would make sense. It's though. troubling how much of a problem that can be because I think about the way that you know. After I had a baby and breastfed, mm. my boobs went away and I was like, let's fix this. Right. And so I did. And it really is unfortunate that they can't right. solve the problem yeah. of a really small or a Of course, people are trying. What are they doing? Injections. Who? Nurses are what? doing the inject. Like there are places you can go. What do they inject have, it like, with saline? saline. Mm-hmm. And it's temporary. Does it work? Yeah. Oh, is it like Botox where after like three months you yeah. go back? Yeah. Okay. I watched a whole documentary on it on Get Vice. out of here. Yeah. How much can they get from it? Oh, I don't know. I want to say something. Does 30 cc's sound right? Well, I don't know because that's like boob. Like the, that's what yeah. they say. Is like how, I forget how it's many something cc's. See, I, maybe it's not. Maybe it's less than that. But they can definitely, you know, it's not as much length as it is around. Girth? Yes. Right, because you, you can't really. Because you can't make it longer. Which is not that. I mean. You know. But again, I'm not looking doesn't for matter girth, though. If other things are, you no, know. you're right about that. Yeah. But I do. I sympathize with. Let's say he did have a micro penis yeah. or whoever. Yeah. That's not nice, and you really can't solve the problem. Right. So I am sympathetic. There's no reason to kill out an entire race over no it. No joke. Yeah. A good <laughs> therapist would have helped him find the woman of his dreams, and it would have been no problem. And there are a lot of asexual people on this planet, and there's a partner for everyone. That reminds me, though, that when I just was talking about the race or the ethnicity, Jewish, whatever, that I got a, a private message today from a listener named Robin. Mm-hmm. And Robin, I am not pleased. Oh, oh, oh. She seemed nice, so I don't want to be harsh. All right. But she took issue with the fact that I find Jewish people funny and that I say that I find them funny. She said, as as well-intentioned as I may be, that I shouldn't paint with such a broad brush and that I shouldn't talk about people in those ways. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm. almost like stereotyping. Yeah. Um, So just let me clarify I do not think every Jewish person is funny. Correct. And um, definitely Robin's not. <laughs> if she's Jewish, I don't know. But um, that, you know how like if a person of color were yeah. to do stand-up comedy, yep. they bring a very specific Which I like. experience yes. that is different from totally. the yep. white male straight experience. yes. And sure. I tend to be drawn towards folks who are culturally or religious Jews. Yes. And um, personally, I don't think that's offensive. More importantly, however, is the fact that I did my homework on religion. Uh, Homework is an understatement. You have... You're a doctor of religion. So it it really burns me up when people (laughs) think they need to religion explain to me. Yeah. Um, But... Another thing I've done my homework on is how you can save money if you have those interest rates that are crazy, keeping you up at night. Maybe Robin needs this. <laughs> for Robin. She was super nice. Right. I was she just was. like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're looking for a way to save some extra money this summer, um, why not start paying less interest on your credit card balances? And that is through Lightstream. It's an easy way to save hundreds to thousands of dollars and lower your interest rate. Lightstream offers credit card consolidation loans from 5.95% APR with auto pay, and there's no fees. You go on there. They have an application online. It's super easy. It takes three seconds, not literally, figuratively. (laughs) And I checked it out. I know a lot of people that have done it, and they've had really good luck. So if you're having trouble, check it out. Uh, Just for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get the discount is to go to lightstream.com slash brain candy, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash brain candy. Subject to credit approval rate includes a 0.50 auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash brain candy for more information. So I would like our listeners to maybe just pump the brakes (laughs) on maybe like prescribing behaviors to me here's here's my my follow-up question to robin yeah would it be offensive if i said i love vietnamese food it is my favorite food i think that vietnamese people make the best most delicious most flavorful food i think it might be to her and that's 
But if I said, what if this group were, that they are so, this is fun, you know, not every single Vietnamese person probably can cook like the no, favorite places not every, that I go. Not all of them. Right. So, I mean, is that a, kind of a metaphor? When for she this? started the email, I thought, or the message, I thought it was going to be about when we were talking about locks and how it's the oldest word in the world or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I was like, leave it to the Jews. Cause I thought some people bulk. At when you say the oh, Jews, yeah, okay. and I thought maybe she, but no, it was just that I said the Jews are funny. Oh, well, Jews are funny. One. I don't care. I think anytime you have a just a lot of anxiety and neuro- <laughs> neuroticism in any human, that that equals funny. Yes, and I believe that I have the same sensibility. Same. I don't happen to be Jewish, right? But. Um, for me, yeah. it's about what someone's experience brings to a comedic performance, mm-hmm. and I tend to be drawn to those. So yeah. let's, whatever. That's but funny. I do apologize. I don't mean to offend. Right. Man, you know what? <sighs> we're going to, something say is going to, somebody's definitely going to be offended by the Adolf Hitler penis comments. Any hooch. Any hoos. Uh, okay, hold on. Do you need to hear about the woman who lost... 10 years of memories due to an enormous poop. Oh, yeah. So what... Yeah, what's the scoop on I mean, that? you got to know, right? Yeah, I mean... So the the this woman lives in Hong Kong, <laughs> and she was suffering from severe constipation mm-hmm. or for more than a week plus. Okay. And <clears throat> then she... I don't know. The clouds part and it's a beautiful day and somehow everything comes out everything everything and because of the excessive force (laughs) she it says for eight hours she was unable to remember anything for the past 10 years according to her family yes they the doctors like did an examination and they said that her health and like mental and physical health was fine but and she was eventually sent home but she still can't remember the eight hours right before or right, but yeah, right before this happened. They say it had something to do with like the blood and yeah. like where it goes. And they said they, <laughs> that it, it was, they, they, the doctor said it was similar to what they call a weightlifter's blackout, where somebody who's trying to lift really, really, really heavy weights, that they can do that where all of a sudden they temporarily lose consciousness if you strain too hard and okay. like hyperventilate. So do you this, think she was. Because you, what you're saying is to the strain. So yeah. she pushed. Yes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's what happened. Oh my. Yeah. So she was determined. Yes. yes. It, it's a, what happens is there's, this is the same thing. Remember we talked about fainting and how there could be like a biological like explanation for like why you faint. So like the blood pressure went super high and because it went super high, then it went super low and the low blood pressure just causes... <laughs> basically unconsciousness and reduction of blood flow to the brain that I hope she learned a valuable brain. lesson about fiber. Right. You know like what was happening in this woman's what kind of stress is she under? Although to be fair, you have a very um freakishly regular freakishly regular situation. Yeah, what's the deal with that? I don't know. I'm fascinated by it. And I am jealous. It's per, it's great. It's, it's mornings. Great. It's like before I'm, you know, I'm not you running or anything. You claim it's from coffee. But you know what? I haven't been drinking coffee in the past like three days and still all good. No matter what you eat. No matter what. That I don't get. Yeah. I think there was like maybe one time where when I was in Peru or one something and I could time. like feel my stomach and I'm like, man. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. You're too you know, blessed to be stressed I, over none. there. Yeah, no stress. Well, at least nothing in the <laughs> <laughs> in the, the colon. Yeah. Well, I mean, I really do hope she got her situation sorted. Yeah, it says uh, <laughs> it says that she's she's okay and that that they're monitoring her the activity in her brain and everything seems to be all fine. So, you know, just but she can't weird, remember the eight hours the eight before hours the poop. And but even right after, she couldn't remember ten years. So. Yeah. It slowly started coming back to her. I wouldn't even be mad if that happened. Right. Eight like years, the last like, 10 you know, years, what did I really do? Besides like have a kid, start a <laughs> podcast. Got married. You know, got married. Like pretty much everything. I mean, have you done easy that? come, the easy whole, go. like 10 year, what do they call that? The No. What is it? Oh my gosh. There's a name for it. It's like on Instagram. It's called like a, it's like a 10 year, 
I don't know what it is. Recap or something? Yeah, something like that, where it's like, post the picture of you from 10 years ago. Oh, challenge. Like, yeah, the 10-year like challenge. Yeah, it's Tell like them, though, I'm not doing that. I'm a woman. I just, in my in my uh, stream, like on Facebook, just yesterday, 10 years ago, what popped up was our trip to Vegas. <laughs> no. Yes. Way. That yes. was 10. I don't think I haven't already picked out the picture that I'm going to post is like a... <laughs> Look at us telling secrets 10 years ago. Nothing's changed except my hair color. Don't you wonder what the secret was? Because I don't know. It was so funny. It must have been hilarious. Like you were whispering in my ear. There's a great... You guys see this picture after I post it. Because I remember the moment. I know the secret was about Adam and he was at the table. That's why we had to whisper. But I and do, I remember I'm giggling like a little schoolgirl. I did get it up the butt on that trip. Woo! Maybe that was it. Woo! Oh my God. Just picturing Dahlia hearing that is horrifying. I love it. Hey, you know God, what? God, Dahlia, I apologize. Hey, Amen. You're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, somebody's Lord. God damn. Oh, I love it. I might edit that out. No, you shouldn't. It's great. <laughs> it's like, about time we talk about that. I mean... We talk about my stuff but all the time. why would that be a secret though? He was there, right? You know, he knows that We're, happened. That was like a flirty giggle, like like yeah, maybe it was about his before, wiener or something. Was this before you were married? Mm-hmm. It was. Mm-hmm. It was. We when had you just, started, just dating. started dating. Yeah. Oh, that's oh right. God. I can't. I'm gonna have to edit this. Man, so good. That's fun. <laughs> good times. That's, Great oldies. Yeah, I recommend it. Like to anybody who yeah. might be single right now, that period of time where you're just beginning the adventure, oh, yeah, it, it doesn't get any better. Than no, that. it doesn't. Do everything. It's all downhill. And everyone. <laughs> yeah. God bless. What do I keep? What do I always say? Nobody on their deathbed says, "I wish I had less sex." That is what I say, Sarah. Oh, that's what you say. <laughs> you just, I just adopted, adopted it. it. I was like, well, you know what I say. <laughs> yeah, I had to have this conversation with my mom. I told you uh-huh. um, that. <laughs> my mom is still in 1952 yep. and like cannot believe that people that aren't getting married Wanna or aren't married, want, yeah, participate in sex oh my God. activities. It seems crazy when they don't to me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> to me, like, it's like, you know what's you wrong with do, you? Right. You could go just, unless that's something you don't want to do, then, you know, good on yeah, you. But t- yeah, to each other. If you own. want it... You go get that. And if you want to remember all of your dating life and these sort of moments that you might forget, you should try Legacy Box because they digitize all your home movies, your photos, VHS, BBB. I don't know what kind of poos you're going to take down the road (laughs) where you may lose 10 years of memories. You got to capsulize them somehow. (laughs) That's hilarious. Right. What if you had this poop stroke right. like the lady we talked about no idea what happened in the last 10 years you'd be like thank god i had legacy box exactly that's what i'm saying vhs tapes from your childhood whatever you might want to remember especially for your ugh, like your folks or your grandparents what a great gift if your grandparents are yes. having an anniversary or something you could digitize all their stuff and then you can take it out of that dusty closet and enjoy it and get organized that's another way to like purge too yes Oh, um, people have a ton of those. And what are you going to do with them? Right. Forget it. Nothing. Uh, there's never been a better time to digitally preserve your memories. Visit LegacyBox.com today to get started. Plus, for a limited time, they're offering our listeners an exclusive discount. Go to LegacyBox.com slash brain and you get 40% off your first order. Whoa. What a deal. Ooh, Go I to love Legacy- a 40% discount. <laughs> Go to LegacyBox.com slash brain and save 40% today. Get started preserving your past, people. Because it's, like I said, it's all downhill. You want to remember the good times. Yes. Because it's, I want to do a campaign where it gets worse. (laughs) The it gets worse campaign. I did just read something that said, despite our, but despite what we think or what we believe, we actually become more optimistic as we get older. Why? I don't know. I didn't click on it and read it because I was like, I don't believe it. That's so weird. I was just watching Wanda Sykes talk about how when you get old, you get super crabby, which I would agree with. Mm -hmm. But you're saying- the patience for BS. Oh, is that lower. I get. Okay, that I get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I have that problem. Yeah, but I think that you know, 
optimism. I don't know about that, especially with this climate change crap. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, true. great. I brought a child into this world. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. They're like, don't worry because like Siberia is going to be warmer. And I'm like, yeah, Siberia. well, thanks. <laughs> It'll become like a hot spot. Yeah, for real. Literally. They're like Russia's becoming, you know. Tolerable. Yeah, tolerable. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Oh. You know what else is happening, which I feel like in some way is related to climate change or something? Did you see <laughs> while I was gone on my trip? that the Doppler radar in California thought that there was a huge storm coming, but it was really Oh, butterflies ladybugs. or something. Yeah, ladybugs. I did see that. I got caught that. in the middle of it. Oh, no. We were on a hike, and it's not like... It's interesting because there are a ton of them, but it's not like a swarm. It's they're not, just everywhere. They're just everywhere. We're walking Whoa. along the path, and Landon has like one land on his face and one land on his arm. And we had no idea hmm. there was this, I don't know, migration of ladybugs. So Where big. were they going? Who knows? Mexico? I don't know. It didn't even say. And why didn't they know this was going to happen? That's, an, that's another good question. Right? Because they seemed genuinely surprised. Like, what could yeah, this be? for real. They were like, what is that? It I'm, must be a storm. And it shows up on the radar. Yeah. That's how big this thing is. Maybe climate change and all of the things that come with that have changed migratory patterns, thus limiting the ability to predict where the heck they're going to be. Because we had the butterfly uh, migration, which maybe that's normal, but I had never seen it before. And maybe it has something to do with like the super bloom in California. We had the fires. We had a ton of rain. Maybe something about... It changed things. Yeah. It said that this... The article I read said that the bug formation was 80 miles by 80 miles. That's big. 80 square miles of bugs. What do you think it is about ladybugs that makes us not freak the fuck out about them? Good branding. <laughs> like whoever the ladybug PR person, excellent. <laughs> wasp, terrible. Just the word, wasp. I think it's... <laughs> Then ladybug. They just need a new name. They do. I think it's just the it's pain that problem. we know can come from one and not the other. Oh, okay. Good point. Because there's... But they flies. Don't... Yeah. Hate them. Swarm of flies. <gasps> well, they land on <sighs> shit though, Linda. Okay. So that's the problem with them. They're so dirty. So what do we have that's kind of like the same as okay, a, okay. Let a me ladybug? Think. Potato butt, like roly poly. hate them. You hate those? Oh, wait. They're roly so polies nice. Were po- roly polies are okay. Potato bugs are different. I thought they were the same. Oh, I thought potato bugs were like those, kind of look like cockroaches. No. No, I'm thinking palmettos. <laughs> is that a thing? Palmetto bug? Pu- On this edition of We Know Nothing. Right? This is always it. <laughs> uh. I, I think potato bugs are roly polies. Oh. It's a good name for them. They kind of look like potatoes. And I like those guys. I do. I always like to touch them and then make them go into the ball. But then now... If it doesn't bite, I'm fine with it. Except for flies which land on shit. I don't like flies. I'm totally okay with the gigantic like mosquito hawks and like moths and stuff. People mosquito don't like... hawks? What is that? Oh my gosh. You'll get used to them in California in the summer if you haven't already. They're, they look like... They kind of look like they'd be scary and dangerous. But they're, they're pretty big. They're probably two inches tall or two inches, I don't know, big, whatever. <laughs> and they, uh, they have a height. I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing to say. Two inches wide? I don't know. Um, long. And long. I think two it's inches the, long. That's, that's the far <laughs> And they, they look like, they kind of almost look like they're giant mosquitoes. And people but they're scared. not? They're not. They're... Mosquito See, hawks. they need a better PR. You're d- right. D- okay, there you go. Good example. You're telling me their name is Mosquito Hawks? Yes. Because that is terrible branding. They hunt the mosquitoes like they hawk, oh. like a hawk. Uh, the- so we should welcome them. Definitely. You definitely want them in your house. How they am I going to know if I get one? I'll show you a picture and you'll know. What they kind of hang out in the corners up at the But they by look the like mosquitoes. But just so big. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of animals that look really funny... Yeah. This is the weirdest thing. And I'm going to have to show you a picture, which is terrible for a podcast, I know. But this article says... Hey, we did rest. Damn it. I Sorry to interrupt, but yes. we keep hitting our mics. Whoa, it's whoa. so bad. You keep hitting your mic. <laughs> Let's be real clear. No, like for weeks. Oh, like, I did hit it the other week. Fair. And then I drew on the wall, which was yeah. like weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, We're going to do better, apart. you guys. 
<laughs> Go ahead. I'm listening. Okay. I'm sorry. So this article says, reports of raccoon dogs running loose in rural England has everyone asking, what the hell are they? So at first I was like, what is this thing? A raccoon dog? I This can't really be. Let me just show you what this thing looks like. Get ready to laugh. This is a dog, okay? A- actual member of the canine family. Oh my God. Come on. Come on. It's That's right. Now scroll related to, to like, a raccoon. Yes. Though, right? And nobody knows like where they come from. Look at this thing. Sarah, that's a raccoon dog. It's not. It says, despite, in spite of their appearance, raccoon dogs are <laughs> also adorably named uh, Tanix. Are, uh, what are they called? Can- those, canids. Those dogs C-A-N-I-D-S. have had sex with raccoons. Definitely. 100%. Well, then Indeed, what are you saying? They are the only species of dog known to hybrate or hibernate. They're native to the forests of eastern Siberia, northern China, north Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, and they feast on fruits and nuts and insects those are not just dogs though they are raccoons wow are you no telling- they're dogs i don't know if we check their dna you're telling me it would have say zero percent raccoon like if they did 23 and me oh that's a good question <laughs> they'd be zero zero percent raccoon even though they look like 50 percent <laughs> it also says in the article that they are extremely smelly and they use scent to communicate with one another and this cannot be a house pet. And so in England, there was somebody... That's how that they got out in England. In England, there was somebody who had these as a pet, and then they got out. Who is the... Who... What kind of fool? I hate people. Those... Those... Yeah. God, those guys. Don't be Anybody stupid. who keeps those animals, they shouldn't. I mean, come on. Yeah. You're an idiot. By the way, you should see The Secret Life of Pets too. It was so good, and I thought of you when I watched oh, it. I was like, I Sarah would love this. the first one. I didn't love the first one. Okay, good. Oh, but a second one I love? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I thought it was really good. And I thought you would like it. So, Oh my gosh, a sequel that's better. I definitely will watch that. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't want to do any spoilers. But anyway. I love that you're not spoiling the (laughs) cartoon. (laughs) I don't want to tell you why. But like other documentaries we watch that are like (laughs) on Netflix. Like he died. Yep, yep, yep. (laughs) Not see your life a pet. She doesn't want to ruin it for me. What did you not like about the first one? I'm silently laughing. It's so great. Um, I thought the potential was there Same. and they didn't land it. Totally. Yeah. And I thought they made the characters too much like the people who do the voices of them. Yeah. So I lost, it lost like This something. isn't the yeah. opposite because wow, the person cool. that Tiffany Haddish or the dog that Tiffany Haddish voices, oh. you would never think it was her. Great. I love that. Yes. It's this thing where you're like... That's great that they made that dog be Tiffany Haddish because it wasn't a stereotype or sort of yeah. like playing to her. Like Oliver and Company was. Did you ever see that movie? No. Oh my gosh. It was just like tropes. The whole thing. Yeah. The I'm Siamese into- cats playing the piano with the chopsticks. Was it like Asian voices or yes. something? Yes. Yeah, no, I'm not into that. We are Siamese, oh, yeah. if you please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember It was that like a whole thing. And then they had the Mexican Chihuahua and they made him real. I mean, it was like. Either Cheech or Chong, one of the two. No, Cheech. I think it was Cheech who did his voice. And, uh, but it's just so, I mean, this was like 1990. Oh, two. Something. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, I was like, I there's no way. Oh, okay. like, oh, right. okay. oh, I thought you said meant like 2002. I was like, no way. That movie felt like it came out way before that. I'm sorry, but wait. That, I'm annoyed about this raccoon dog because oh, yeah. Yeah. it's definitely you know? a raccoon. Oh, it says it's not. But nobody knows why they're like Guys, it. when you look at this thing, it'll be like when you yeah. saw Rasputin's penis. <laughs> You're going to be like, that's a raccoon. Oh, my God. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about why they look like that. They look like it because they're half raccoon. I mean, it's weird. I should have done more research on this. <laughs> you can 100% tell that we've been drinking. Also, 100%, but it's fine. Um, kind of speaking of climate change, which we did a minute ago, here's a, uh, weather related story for oh, you okay. and you'll enjoy this. Um, you are familiar with the Ark Encounter Museum of like the yes. Noah's Ark. Yes, 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 yes. Mythology uh-huh. that they pretend is real. Um, <laughs> the Ark Encounter is suing. Oh no. For rain damage. No! That's yeah. great. I've never been happier to click and read. Oh my they goodness. They were 
not prepared for a lot of rain, mm. much like mm. the people of mm. Nineveh, or not Nineveh, that was Jonah, of, of the, wherever uh. Noah lived. And oh um, there was they, the road leading to the Ark Encounter what needed a million dollars in repairs, and they are worked up about this act of God. <laughs> I Did they like it. not get the message soon enough that they need to start building or what? They didn't believe they when didn't... they heard the storm was right? coming. Oh my gosh. I saw this person on Twitter, by the way, who, let me think. I, the Their handle is something about, you know, Quiverful? That's what the 19 kids and counting people practice where you just keep having more babies forever. I didn't know there was a name for it. Yeah, it's like a uh, worldview okay, okay. about how you got to oh keep gosh. reading. Yeah. And <sighs> um, that this person is like a former who mm-hmm. grew up in that and now they're not. Mm-hmm. And so they do a lot of tweets about things that I love if you used to be evangelical. And this person went to the Ark Encounter and did like a thread about the way that the wives were portrayed at the Ark Encounter. Oh, my god! It is fascinating because... Oh, I want to see that. The Bible is written by men. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> <laughs> so women are <laughs> underrepresented oh in the stories. God. And so we don't know anything about Noah's wife and the, the wives of his sons. So instead of just saying we don't know anything, they filled in the blanks. Oh. Mm. And created Those are narratives. Good stories. And these women are all long-suffering... Um, domestic wives who, you know, that's probably what they were like, but they, they gave them names. They gave them jobs. They created a whole narrative oh about my goodness. What, what these women were all about. Well, this is kind of interesting. You bring this up because one of the articles I found was about how, uh, archeologists have discovered pottery in, New Mexico from that's over a thousand uh, from a, a influential uh, civilization that lived over a thousand years ago mm. and it revealed differences in the gender roles than what we thought they were going to be okay so all pottery was made by men they did like the crafty that was like in so when uh when other settlers came in there, I presume are, you know, white people who didn't know what they were talking about, uh, they <laughs> said, they looked at like the people who were making the, doing the pottery and because it was part of their culture that women were the ones who did these things like make we pottery, assumed. they only saw the women, you know, maybe it's like two women and 20 men. They only saw the women who were making it and so wrote and, and said like, oh, the men, you know, women make the pottery. This is how it was. This is how it is. Yeah. But now all of the findings of fingerprints and this forensic archaeology they're doing shows that it was actually the men who did all of the pottery making and like sitting around the, all these like intricate, you know, designs on it that they had always said. Wonder what the women were doing. I think they were doing something else. Badass. Like I I really do. I feel like it was like, okay, the men are doing like the artsy stuff and maybe the women are like, I don't know, teaching schools or teaching the kids or something like that. And we, you know, and it was uh, it was just interesting to see that, that it was so different. And they looked at the length of the ridges on the fingerprints. So the difference, men have wider ridges and, you know, wider difference between that, like between the ridge, ridges. And they said that over 50% of the shards were made distinctively by male hands and 40% by women and 13% had ridge gaps that they couldn't identify. But that this was something that was like there weren't almost in in a way of saying like there weren't these like gendered jobs where it was like yeah men and women both made this men and women both did this everybody needs pottery everybody did everything and it was totally opposite of what the like archived writings of the time had said that's the problem we use our own experiences yes it's it's not always intentional (sighs) it's just the lens through which you see the world Mm -hmm. yeah and that you you have to really be careful about that because we can make assumptions yeah. that are not at all accurate. I wish there was a way to know more about. Yeah. I I even get obsessed with just like uh thanks to um I have serious uh radio in my car mm. and thanks to that I'm able to see who's saying a lot of songs that I might not mm. you know know 
otherwise. Yes. Yeah. And I realized I really love Dusty Springfield. Oh and God. Isn't that funny? I realized yeah. I love the Pointer Sisters the other day, too, for the same <laughs> reason. I was like, I love every one of their songs, <laughs> right. and I know every word. When I look down, there's often themes like, oh, it's the Dave Clark Five again, yeah. or whatever. It's always music from the 60s. But I thought, I wonder what she what her story is. She's clearly passed or we'd know more about her, but Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to look that up. But I wish we could do that about more ancient history. It's, I like the mystery. It's fun to figure out little things, but don't Mm -hmm. you wish we knew more? I really do. That's the only thing about death I'm looking forward to is the hope of maybe, maybe we'll know. I don't know if it'll just be lights out, but if it's not, I just want to be able to hear all the stories. So dumb. Mm, It's not dumb. But just you're curious thing. about stuff. I love it. Let's wrap it up. All right. It's been real fun. I think 333 was one of our favorites. It really was one of my favorites. I mean, it might be the booze talking, but I don't even care. I still like, we feel, we still covered science stuff. Yeah. We still covered poo stuff. We still covered dick stuff. Classic episode. Sorry, Linda. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.